There are so many different things you can do with the Notion app, and there's so many different ways you can use it that I thought I'd share how I personally use the app from day to day. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. For free Notion templates, check out the link in the description below. Now obviously every day will look slightly different and maybe in the future I'll go through my whole day, but in this video I'm just going to go over what I specifically used Notion for. So the first thing I do once I've woken up is I go downstairs, I have my breakfast, and then when I come back upstairs that's when I first have a look at Notion. So I'll have a look to see all the things that I need to do and check those things off that I've already done. In this case, I happen to actually have remembered to clean my teeth, something that sometimes I do forget. So I can say I cleaned my teeth today, you can see I cleaned them yesterday, and now that's disappeared from my to-do list. I also remembered to drink some water this morning, so that's all done. Now you can see on my left in the task database, I have my priority tasks, the things I need to get done, and my recurring tasks. Then on the right, I have my inbox. And that inbox contains literally anything from notes, to do's, learning, anything that's there from previous days, weeks, etc. So I'm just going over all the different things that I could get done and what I need to do. Now engagement is a recurring task and something that I do every morning. It's responding to YouTube comments, responding to any messages I've got over Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, Reddit, anything like that. But it also includes having a look at all of the communities and other pieces of content that other people using Notion have put out. So I'll go into all of the communities and look at all the new posts. And I will also go on YouTube, so when I wake up there's loads of notifications and if I want to watch the video I'll put it to my watch later list and then go downstairs, have breakfast, do the process, and then when I'm doing my engagement I can look through all of those videos. Then I'll go back to Notion, say I've done my engagement for the day, and then I won't really go back to social media at all, to be honest. Now looking at the other recurring tasks, I also have a review, and because there wasn't many things to review for this day, I only had a couple of cards and no areas, I just went to do that now to get it out the way, done in the morning. You can see I have those questions at the front of the card, I personally talk to myself out loud answering those questions, then if I get them right, then I move the stage on, if I get them wrong, then I say that I got it wrong. In this case, I actually got both of them right, so I've just added one stage, and that's me done for the review. So I'm going to go into the review recurring task, say that I've done it, and now that will disappear from my to-do list. Now you can see I actually have an event in there, but I couldn't remember what time it was, so I just clicked on the event, and you can see it was at 9pm, so it was just reminding me when that was. So outside of Notion, I actually had a conversation with one of the other Notion pros because we were going to host the Bullet Journal Methods Crowdcast. And I was talking to him over Slack, but what I actually do with most of my events is when there's a link, such as a Zoom call link, or in this case, the Crowdcast link, I will take the URL to either the Zoom link, the Crowdcast link, or in the case of an email, I'll take the URL of the email. I'll then paste that into my event, which is my task database, and create a bookmark. Now, when that event comes up, like the Kehi and the Marie's meeting on my to-do list, I can click on there and the link is there so I don't have to go anywhere to try and find it. Now, that was something in my inbox, so I just got rid of that, deleted it because I don't need it anymore. Now, again, off camera, I did do some of these tasks, so I was just ticking those tasks off to say that I've done them. And with the YouTube video specifically, I actually have the due date, which is a roll up from the project in that task. So when I was on YouTube, I used that date to schedule when the video was going to go public. And because this is literally after me having done about an hour of editing, I had to look through my inbox and realized I've got four different video ideas sitting in my inbox. These video ideas could have been sitting there for a couple of days or might just have been added. Most of the ideas come from either questions people have asked me or after looking at my analytics or any keyword research that people are specifically looking for. So you can see I've used the shortcut Control shift p and moved them to my YouTube page. And now all of those things are down the bottom. So I'm going to click and drag them up into the right database and drop them in. Now they are all projects, they're now YouTube project videos. Now this is my project database, so wherever these projects are on the calendar, that is when the video is going to go public. So I'm just going to drag them across so the corresponding date is shown in those tasks. Now because I have a template for all my YouTube videos, I can click on the template, slide across and drag all of those tasks into the task database that is linked in the projects database. And that's all those tasks done for that project. Then I can go back to YouTube, 
Then turn the next video idea into a video, drag those tasks down to the task database, go back to YouTube, and repeat the process for all four videos. Now I'm opening up these pages using the shortcut Control and Enter instead of clicking the Open to page, just in case any of you were wondering how I was getting it done quite quickly. So now I have all of the due dates for those videos there, and I have every single task that I need to do for each of those videos. But now I need to work out when I'm going to do those tasks. So I'm just going to scroll down to the task database, and it's automatically added today's date onto all of those tasks because of the filter I have. So I'm going to drag those into Saturday and Sunday because I don't do any YouTube video task on those days. And because I'm showing the project these tasks are related to, I can see which ones are actually due for today and which ones I've just added. So now I can scroll down and then I can just drag all of these tasks to the day I know I'm going to do them. Now I batch my tasks together, so I do all of the tasks that are similar on the same day. So I'll do all of the thumbnails on a Friday, I'll research all of the videos on a Monday, I'll script them all on a Tuesday, etc, etc. So all I need to do is look at the title of the task and drag it to its corresponding day. Now for the published tasks, sometimes they're actually not in the month, so because I have that roll-up of the due date from that project's database, all I need to do is go into the task and match the date to the due date. So I can see when the video is due, and obviously it's going to be published when it's due. Now I can see that there are four videos that I will be working on in that week, but I actually only work on three videos, so I can drag those bottom videos down one week because they are sorted by the due date, so I know these videos will be due latest. Now this is just an example of how I use that scratch pad to work things out. Someone had asked a question in one of the community groups and I wanted to try and work it out, so I didn't have to go to any page, I just used that space at the side of my dashboard to figure it out. And what they asked was can you combine all of the blocks into just one block, so I thought you could use a code block and apparently you can. But I figured that out right on my dashboard, I didn't have to go anywhere else to work that out. And this process is very similar to when I'm creating a new template or creating any ideas that I've got. Because I have a link to my template which is linked to my public page on my dashboard, I can just click on that book, it will take me to the template, I can add a new template, use the template inside that template database, and you can see I've already got the links in there, I've already got my callout block in there, and I've already got a table in there because that's probably the most common thing that I use when I'm solving issues. And then I went through problem shooting essentially what someone had asked me to do. In this case, someone asked, can you count how many properties are empty and how many properties are full? So I very quickly gave a potential solution to the issue. Obviously, you can do it in numerous different ways, but this was just a quick answer for what they were asking. And because this is linked with my public page and how everything works, I then created the relations to the specific properties and formulas and blocks and everything that I'd used. So if they do have any questions about how things work, they can just go into the rest of my page and find out how things work, the descriptions and any other examples because it's all linked to my templates. Then because this is my public page, I can just copy the link and paste that into wherever they've asked me the question, whether that's Discord, Reddit or anywhere else. So after doing some more work on the videos and working with a client, I actually got some more tasks done. Then I found a bit of time to do some typing, so I went on to Typing Club and just practiced typing so I can increase my typing speed. And now because I can see when this video is due, and I can see I'm actually doing the audio recording obviously right now, but on the day I was doing the screen record so I couldn't tick off any of those other boxes, I knew I could then look at my inbox for other things I could be doing. So I saw time blocking in there as something that I could potentially create a solution or a template for. So again, I used that Control shift p to just dump it straight into my template database, and now that's in there, along with the rest of my templates. But because that's a public page, if I don't want it to go straight to that public page, I can actually move it to my play area. So I can go into my play area, drag those back up to the top, and I've actually got a filtered view of my templates for things that I don't want to be shown straight in front because I may be working on them or they need to be private for some reason. Towards the end of the day, I actually started playing around with time blocking because it was already there and I could see it was in progress. I started playing around with template box and seeing what I could create. 
and everything that I play with sits in that template database. So if anyone does want to have a look at what I've been playing with or any ideas that I've come up with or solutions that I've given a potential solution for, they will all sit in my public templates database so anyone can see them, use them, copy them, etc. If you want to have a look at all the templates that I've currently made or solutions to potential problems, then check out the link in the description below. But until then, you can check out this playlist over here and I'll see you there.